I've been editing video for well over 15 years and through that time, I've been able to become very proficient at editing video and I've learned a great workflow that allows me to put out videos really fast and I genuinely believe that it doesn't have to take you forever to edit your video, that you can actually grow as a video editor and get your videos out there quicker and I believe the first thing that you need to get better at, number one is planning out your video. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Tsukori with Think Media and this channel is all about helping you build your influence here on YouTube and whether that's reviewing the best tools on how to do that, whether it be the best lighting or mics and cameras, but also some video editing tutorials so that you can actually grow in your video editing and get more videos done. But talking about planning, I do really think it's important that you plan out your videos. You need to ask the question, what kind of video am I making? Because the reality is there's different types of video formats, whether that be a vlogging video where you're actually holding holding your camera and walking around somewhere. Maybe it's a talking head video, kind of like what you're seeing right now. This is a very stationary shot and I'm just talking to a camera. Maybe you're doing a software tutorial where you need to share the screen and talk through how to use a program or software. Or maybe it's a tutorial or review video where you're actually demonstrating or showing a specific product or something like that. And that would require you probably getting secondary shots or B-roll after you shoot your A-roll. One of the key elements to planning out your videos is to simply outline your script. And I don't believe you necessarily need to write out verbatim uh, your script. However, I do think it's important to outline your script because it's gonna give you the general ideas that you're gonna share on video and keep you aligned throughout the video so that you're not just coming up with things on the fly. One cool thing you can actually do when writing out your script is add in the B-roll shots you need to get so that you know when to get them. And then you also shoot them in chronological order, which is actually just gonna make editing a lot easier easier because you're coming prepared and because your B-roll shot chronologically. Now, when you take all this planning into consideration, it's actually gonna make you more effective on video. You're gonna show up more confident and you're actually probably gonna shoot it more quicker because you have thought about it, you have planned it, you have thought yourself clear, and then it's actually gonna make your editing time even shorter. But the next thing you're gonna wanna do is dial in your camera settings. Now, I know you clicked on this video to learn more about video editing, but with the video editing workflow, it starts in camera and it starts with the settings that you tell your camera to record your video in. Now, your camera settings apply to whether you're using a smartphone or an actual camera, but nonetheless, to shoot in your best resolution, whether that be 1080 or 4K. And then we like shooting at 24 frames per second, which is just great for real-time video if you don't plan on slowing it down. Now, if you wanna shoot footage that you wanna slow down in post, it'd be important to learn uh, the best slow motion settings, and that would be shooting at higher frame rates. And I wanna get too deep into that, but you should just know all these things before you actually shoot your video. Now that you have sat down and you've shot your video, it's time to organize your folders. Don't even open up the editing program yet. You're actually just gonna create a folder. And I like to create folders with the date first and then the title of the video because it allows me to reference it in the future because I know when I made that video. Once I create that folder, I then create two folders inside of that folder and I call it A-roll and then the other folder B-roll. A-roll is where I put all my talking head footage from my SD card or my smartphone. And then B-roll is when I add all my secondary footage, whether that be something I'm demonstrating on camera or showing how to use a product, that would go in the B-roll folder. Now, a quick tip here is that if you're running out of space in your computer, I would encourage you to invest in what is called a solid state drive. These are very small external drives that don't require any power, they're very portable, but the key thing about them is that they're very fast. And if you're running out of space in your computer or laptop, this would be a good investment to allow you to not have to run into issues where you're always having to constantly delete footage and projects all the time because you're trying to create space. Just think about looking into an SSD and we'll post links to our favorites down in the description below. This video is sponsored by Camtasia. And if you don't know what Camtasia is, it is an editor and a screen recorder for beginners. Most people, especially if you have yet to edit your first video, you just need a simple and easy editing experience and Camtasia gives you that 1000%. Camtasia works for both PC and Macs and if you can see yourself using Camtasia, be sure to check out the link in the description to try it out for free, as well as a special discount if you wanna actually invest in it, you can get 10% off. We'll post all that information down in the description below. Now, once you have your software open, the next step is to set up your edit. And before I get started, I like to save the project in the folder that I created earlier in the video and just to make sure that everything's all in one place. So if I ever have to reference this project ever again, everything's all in one place. Once your footage is all imported, you're ready to what I call trim the fluff. And so you can just drag your A-roll all onto the timeline 
and then go through it and delete any unwanted mistakes and or ums and things like that. Most editing softwares have what is called a trim or splice tool. And so figuring out what that is on your editing software will be really key. And then also figuring out what is the shortcut to be able to do that. With Camtasia, Command T will splice the clip. And then I like to click on the magnetic tool because when I delete unwanted clips, it just ripple deletes all the footage that comes after it. One quick tip here is I actually like to do this backwards because oftentimes your best take is your last take. And so if you are watching your edit chronologically, the chances are you're gonna find yourself making the same mistake a lot of the times. Whereas if you just started from the end of your A-roll clip, then you're gonna find the best take sooner so you don't have to go through all that unwanted footage. Now, once you've edited down your A-roll to its purest form, I like to just watch it back and just make sure the video is flawless straight through without any more edits that need to be made. And then I take this time to add in some zoom ins and zoom outs based off of the cuts. And this is actually a cool little tip that makes your video look more smooth when you're watching it in real time. It looks like you're actually not messing up because the video is jumping in and out. The next part of the workflow is to then add assets. The first asset I like to add to my edits is our bumper or intro. Some people like to call it a stinger, but adding that in between the intro portion and the main portion of the video is the first asset I like to add. What's cool about Camtasia is right into the software, you can actually use one of their motion uh, titles to actually create a bumper for yourself, which is super nice and convenient. But nonetheless, once you do that, the next thing you can do is add music. Now it's really key that you use royalty-free music so that your video doesn't get taken down or demonetized. And what's cool about Camtasia is they actually have something what is called TechSmith assets for Camtasia, which they offer 20 plus million different assets, whether that be B-roll footage, audio, or even video templates and motion graphics, it all has it for you. And what's so cool about using this when you couple it with Camtasia is you can actually just click the Camtasia logo on whatever asset you find in their database, and then it loads right into your project, which makes editing super easy, especially for beginners. One quick tip here is if you find yourself using the same assets, like for us, we have the same intro bumper, and typically for a season, I'll use the same music in my videos, you could systemize this by actually adding it all into a project that's empty and then just saving that project somewhere on your computer or your hard drive. And then when you actually start a project, just open up this project, save as back into the folder. I hope this makes sense. But then you actually have everything you need at your fingertips right when you start your edit. Now, once we've added the assets to our project, it is now time to add the B-roll and any titles that we wanna add in. And hopefully you wrote down in your script your B-roll checklist. This is when you can refer it and actually reference your B-roll that hopefully you shot in chronological order and then just add it to where it makes sense. When you're talking about something and you have the demonstration part shot separately, you can just add that on top of your A-roll, hence why it's called B-roll. And if you actually wanna mute this clip, if there's audio on this clip, you can just right click it and then select silence audio, or in some cases maybe mute audio. And then that way you don't have to hear what's coming out of that B-roll clip because you have your A-roll going under it. Now one of the coolest things about video editing is that you don't actually have to use your own B-roll, you can use stock footage. And like what I mentioned earlier in the video with TechSmith, you can actually find footage from there by just searching a keyword term based off of what you're talking about and then just adding it into your project. Super cool and easy way to level up your video edits, especially if you didn't take the time to shoot B-roll yourself. Once I've added B-roll throughout the video, it's time to add text. And I like adding text at a few different points. Number one, I like adding my social media handle at the beginning of the video. And then number two, I like to add it whenever I'm sharing a tip. We like to put our tips in a black or white box with a specific font. And another way you can actually use your titles is to make title screens. And so you can get motion backgrounds from TechSmith and then add text over it. And that could be one way that breaks up your video as well. But nonetheless, adding text at these moments will keep your viewer more engaged and kind of break up your video in something more digestible as they can follow along through your tips. And just like what I mentioned before about systemizing your assets, you can actually systemize your text as well by creating favorites out of text that you create so you don't have to constantly recreate them and they'll save a lot of the settings that you have from the first time you make them. Now, once you're done with your titles, you're almost done with your edit. But if you're getting value in this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And I would love to know down in the comments below what editing software you're using to edit your video. Uh, I think workflow doesn't matter what software you use. What matters is your workflow, but would love to know. So let me know. But the next thing I do after I add in my titles is I watch my video back. You wanna make sure you're checking your audio, that your voice is louder than the music that's going on underneath it. Make sure you're checking your spelling to all your titles. And then you're checking for any errors that you might have just overlooked while you were watching back your A-roll. But once you've done that and you feel like your ready is good to go at that level, then I would encourage you to then export your video. 
when rendering your video, you just wanna make sure your settings are consistent all the way through. So make sure your render settings match your video file settings and match your timeline settings as well. And then just export it into that same folder that we created earlier in this video. And what's so cool about Camtasia is if you're actually uploading to YouTube, you can actually connect the software to your YouTube channel and upload directly to YouTube from the program and then title, tag, and description your video, which is a huge time saver and really cool feature that Camtasia has. But legit, that is my process with every video I create. Doesn't matter the kind of video I create, this is the process that I use. I make sure that I plan, I make sure I set up my camera, my folders, I get into the edit, and this is kind of how I attack my edit. And I believe if you can dial in a workflow for your editing, you can actually become a more productive video editor and edit your videos fast. These shouldn't take forever as you are making consistent videos over time. But if you wouldn't wanna check out Camtasia for yourself, you can check out the link down in the description below. And if you wanna check out a video Video on the best camera settings for YouTube videos, you can click or tap the screen, as well as if you're using your smartphone, be sure to click or tap the screen as well. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.